Hello viewers, today I decided to do some different video than usual. Uh, I decided to show you what is the next stages which I'm going to do with this car. By stages I mean upgrades. Because I haven't done something significant to the engine especially. And if I need to be honest, I was going totally different route. What I, I was going to do to the car performance wise, power wise. Uh, but after participating in the BMW Cup, uh, which is a time attack event, I completely decided to throw away my ideas and uh, to do something completely different than, than my plans, which I was which I was collecting parts for I don't know how many time, uh, but this does matter. I'm going to show you what was my initial plans and after that I'm going to show you what road I'm going to go ahead. So yeah, pretty obviously I was going the first induction road, of course like a lot of people, as we can see it, I'm going to show you in details, so let's, let's show you. Okay, so I took this, let me show you, I, even after so many time I forget what I took, I think it was 5862. Yeah, it's 5862 Precision Turbo. A lot of people are going to recognize these turbochargers. They are, they are one of the leading brands and one of the best turbochargers. This is with ceramic bearings. So this is the Gen 2 turbocharger, uh, which is, I believe, one, one of the best turbochargers on the market. And yeah, I bought this brand new one. And as we can see from sitting, <laughs> it started to make some rust on the hot side. Uh, but not big of a deal. If you install it, it's going, this is going to happen pretty fast. Uh, so it's not big of a deal that he have, have rust. Still, it's a brand new turbocharger, which does matter. As we can see here, we have made custom exhaust manifold from stainless steel. I haven't made it. Uh, I, I have paid to someone to make it. Uh, to made it. It looks pretty good. Probably I'm going to need to do some modifications to it. Let me show you what I don't like mostly on this uh, exhaust manifold. Okay, so on the other side, on the flange side, which is going to be mounted to the cylinder head, I don't, I don't like how it is finished. It's, uh, as we can see here, the weldings. But I have paid significant amount of money for this for this job, uh, and yeah, if it. If I need to be honest, I was expecting a little bit more precise job by this. I mean, was I was expecting a little bit more ending flow finish on the ports, as we can see all these welds, how they are sticking out. So for sure, when I decide to use this, I'm going to I'm going to make it much more smoother, like than like now. Uh, so yeah, this is the biggest thing which I don't like. The same is on the flange. I believe this was T4. I, I I forget guys, it's so many times passed, passed down. And here is twin scroll as uh, as on the west gate. Uh, I'm going to use only one, one west gate, not two, like some people. Uh, I pref prefer to keep it a little bit simple and uh, room wise, I'm not going to have so much room. I know probably with two west gates, the control of the boost is going to be much more precise. The other minus is that uh, these waste gates are not the most reliable things in the world and when you have two waste gates it's kind of debatable which is more which is more bulletproof but uh, I don't want to go in details about this uh, and yeah I, I bought some turbo smart waste gates, blow offs, you name it I have forged pistons, forged cone rods, standalone ECU, injectors, intercoolers I have everything needed to do this forged induction project in this car but as I told you, just, just before I decided to go this road, I decided to take completely different, which I'm going to show you. But before that, I need a confession to make, which is totally my fault. I'm going to show you what I mean. Yeah, actually, one more thing. I even decided to pay for this, for this custom downpipe. This is how far I was ready to start this project. As I told you, I have everything. To do it, <laughs> but that's not us. Actually, the fabricator even made me this 
custom engine mounting which is much more reinforced than the original one which is needed because of all of this extra weight which we're going to install on the right side of the engine uh, so that's why it's a good idea to use reinforced mounting when installing a thing like this because this is really heavy and your aluminium engine mounting is really, really prone of breakage that is why this is a uh, is a pretty much a must to be done. He made pretty solid engine mounting, which for sure is going to hold and it's not going to break. Something else is going to break, but uh, this is not. Okay, so this is a forged corn rods. Pretty obvious, yeah. Let me show you. This is what we have inside. Just a normal forged corn rod. Yeah, the, <laughs> it's with little bit different finish than usual. They are yellow. They are from the premium side. And this corn rods is from pretty much uh, right now is very known brand. Max Speeding, speeding Rods. And actually this brand was one of my first, first supporters for my channel. Which was really cool actually. When, uh, when I received the email from them I was uh, I was really surprised and I was not expecting this uh, and uh, this is actually happening before I don't know maybe two years something like that I'm not sure uh, you can imagine how much time have passed probably even more than two years I don't remember guys uh, but yeah they were if I remember right the first ones which contacted me that want to support my channel with some parts from their from their website which I can freely choose in my case I was going forced induction and I decided to choose forged corn rods uh, because I already had, I had forged pistons and uh, yeah they actually don't have forged pistons but uh, uh, they have pretty reliable corn rods so yeah I need to apologize them that uh, <laughs> They needed to wait so much time before I show their product in my channel. Uh, I was telling them all the, all the time that uh, I don't know when I'm going to start my project and stuff like that. And uh, So yeah, thank you Max Speeding Rods for supporting my channel. Once again, your pro product looks amazing. I'm not going to lie, it looks really solid. And the other thing which I want to say a few words about, let me get you a little bit closer. So for many people which go are going this road, they going to know this, but Max Speeding Rods are coming with this RP2000 series boats. And I have seen some people which are contacting AARP and asking them is this real boats or not? Because uh, if you have done your research, these boats are not cheap. These boats are really expensive. And for the price of these corn rods, before at least two years, I'm not sure what's the price right now, but if you remove the price of the boats and you pay only for the corn rods, the corn rods was some funny price, something like, I, I believe something between 100 and 200 dollars, or let's say euro, which is, <laughs> what to say guys, this is a bargain. Not sure what is the price I need to check right now for these rods, uh, but once again, they are coming with these boats, which pretty much beat any price. So, really massive corn rods. I, ha I have seen a lot of projects using these corn rods on max speeding rods without any issues. I, I haven't done some crazy research about this, but uh, when I, I was ordering them, I have done my research then, before two years. There were a lot of positive feedback for these corn rods. Uh, and people were scared uh, because they were crazy cheap compared with the other brands. So when you add up these boats, you're paying pretty much almost nothing for them. So for sure, if I was going back in time and I was going once again for induction, for sure I was going to go this road once again. And as you can see, they are coming with pre-installed bearing for the piston bolt. So you just need to check your clearance here. So to be sure that everything is all right. So yeah, once again, thank you for supporting the channel Max Spinning Rods. I'm sorry that I haven't done the video so long, uh, but yeah, this is uh, how things go sometime. Okay, so after all this mambo jumbo, 
let me show you what route I'm going to go ahead power wise and you guys going to see is it good or bad So hey guys, for those of you which don't know, this is BMW S54 engine which is took from E46 uh, and yeah we're going to go this road. I'm not going to go for induction or stuff like that for now, I'm go going naturally as part engine and for, and for me especially this engine is probably one of the best and probably the best 6 cylinder engine which is ever made. This is why I decided to go this road because I always wanted this engine and to, to drive it especially in this chassis. So this have been always something which I have wanted to do. This convert this swap to install S54 in E36. I believe this is going to make the car something totally different. And yeah, for now I'm not going to go something crazy uh, by going some crazy upgrades. Later said I'm of course going to do them. But for now I just want to install it and see is everything going to work as it should be but of course before that we're going to do some major servicing of the engine I'm not going to throw it away without knowing what is happening inside I'm going to completely open up everything and uh, going to do a complete service <laughs> by complete service I mean pretty much everything probably the only thing which I'm not going to change is the piston rings because I am not going to be able to do my break-in process uh, because it's a new swap and uh, I'm sure that uh, when we install it they're going to be a, a lot of idle working before everything is worked out. For those of you which know me a little bit better, I am doing my braking process while driving the car on the highway with much higher RPMs than no. If there are some issues I'm going to open up the engine once again uh, and change the piston rings. Uh, but for now, what, what, do you don't, what do you don't like here? Uh, and uh, I'm going to change them and uh, I'm going to do a proper break-in process but for sure this is a fresh swap that's why I'm not going to change them because I'm not going to be able to do the break-in process as it should be done uh, that's why I'm just going to service the cylinder head all the accessories around the engine it's going to be pretty long series about servicing this engine but I really hope that in the end of the day that uh, it's going to be something reliable power wise rpm wise and everything else we're going to see how it's going to turn out and actually the person which sold me this engine was really cool guy uh, he was BMW passionate guy uh, I'm going to post now a video from him which he's, he sent me just right after he have removed the engine Hey man, so I think I am I'm pretty much there ready for tomorrow so obviously you've got the engine here I was just going to run through all the bits obviously you've got the engine there you've got the radiator and the uh oil cooler down the bottom there. Uh, I've got the intake boot for you. I've got the electric pedal and I've cut the plug off for you. So you've got that too. Uh, there's the fuel pressure regulator and no joke, I replaced this 50 miles before I took the car off. So this is a brand new fuel filter. Um, I also thought you might want the fan if you're gonna run the radiator and the you know standard engine. Obviously here's your ECU. There's the airbox, and yeah, that's about it. Obviously, I'll get a key to throw in this tomorrow. Um, the only thing I couldn't find was the black relay that you sent me. Um, so as you can see, there's nothing missing from here. These are for the, um, what do you call it, like the O2 sensors. So this was the one of the fuses that had blown that I replaced. Um, I think there's salmon relays for the SMG. That's not even related. Um, but I just don't see where the, the plug would have been. Um, just show you on the engine, or on, on the chassis, sorry. Um, so you've got one plug down here. I just removed that and looked it up. That's the windscreen wiper one. But there's nowhere else that a, um, a relay would be for the fuel pump. Uh, so I'm at a loss. But other than that, if I find it, I'll post it to you. But uh, other than that, I think we are pretty much ready. 
So, yeah. Enjoy it. I look forward to seeing the videos. So I want to say a big thumbs up for Michael from England. Uh, I'm not going to say his, uh, his hometown and stuff, but uh, I'm sure that he's going to watch this video. So once again, thank you Mike, Michael for everything. Uh, and uh, yeah, he even he even gave me some service books about service book about the engine. Uh, as we can see, they have repaired the Vanus unit. I'm going to do the same actually. I'm going to redo this job. And yeah, there is kind of expensive. This is in pounds, so he pretty much have done. I'm not sure is this to the is this with the Vanus, uh, but 1,100 pounds and the servicing actually if I need to be honest uh, the engine haven't seen a really good engine servicing uh, because they have changed the oil not so frequent I have checked all everything about the engine and uh, yeah it doesn't look uh, really promising uh, but at least it's not on a big mileage so hopefully it's going to be fine but even if it's not I'm going to rebuild it so not big of a deal I have checked how it looks inside and uh, it's pretty obvious that it haven't seen a lot of oil changes uh, right now it's going to be hard to show you uh, but when we open it up you guys are going to see what I mean uh, I'm going to try to clean it up so yeah I have uh, a lot of job ahead of me no doubt about this uh, and a lot of plans uh, Michael it was really cool by sending me the, pretty much everything that is needed for this conversation he even sent me the EVS with the key which is really cool uh, and uh, the lines for the oil cooler which probably I'm not going to use because I don't think uh, the E46 lines are going to fit on E36 but I have original lines bought previously because I was planning to install this filter housing on my car so it's not big of a deal but the video is getting long and this video was all about what I'm going to do, to do this car in the next videos I'm going to open up the engine we're going to analyze how it looks inside and after that little by little I'm going to do series about rebuilding it I have bought some upgraded parts which is much better than the OEM ones which you're going to see during the series I'm not going to show everything right now uh, because it's not going to be interesting uh, and yeah I'm going to end up the video here so thank you for watching guys and see you in the next video